Hello guys, and welcome to another game of Dota 2. You're here with only logic. Uh, sorry I haven't been casting much recently. I haven't uh, really had the time or ability to be able to cast recently, but I've got to be very thankful to Pyron Zero once again for letting me use his PC. Fortunately, he's not joining me today, but you've got me to cast for you in this uh, Cyber Wars game. This is another Cyber Wars game, and it's between two teams, Team Broats and Team Omega. And we've already had a few bands and a few picks. Uh, Alchemist and Wisp first band, two very, very good bands. Maybe that Alchemist a little bit uh, unseen, but uh, it could be used uh, quite strongly against Broats. Team Omega have actually won both of the games that they've played, and Team Broats, although they have won one game against Boys Boys, it was through a disqualification. So we get to see what's uh, to happen here. Already a couple of bands on the Team Omega side, Batrider and OD. Batrider also a very common band. OD might be a bit more of a respect band towards uh, Team Broats. Uh, who have already picked Darkseer and Lifestealer. Darkseer definitely one of the strongest offlane heroes that uh, Dota has probably ever seen. You don't even have to be in the lane to be doing well in your lane. You can harass without even being there. It's absolutely amazing. And Lifestealer, typical carry, can also offlane, can also uh, mid. Very strong pick. Two picks from Team Omega here are the Weaver and the Bane. Weaver uh, has seen a lot of uh, action recently, especially after TI2. And Bane is just an all-round good support with uh, Disables coming out the Wazoo and a pretty good nuke as well. Making him slightly tanky. Third ban here from Team Omega is a Puck, so they really want to get rid of their mid options here. Uh, Puck being one of the good mids, especially against Bane. If Bane ever goes mid, he could go as a side support as well, of course. But uh, Puck definitely a good, strong mid hero, one that you don't really want to see playing. Having said that, Puck's a difficult hero to master. So, much like, uh, say, a Visage, uh, or maybe Naga, knowing when to pop those spells, it's uh, a bit more of a, definitely a pro hero, but still, if you know how to play him well, it's just like a good Chen, if you know how to play him well, then you do a lot of damage with him, and that's what they would want to see. A counter to a counter here, they also want to get rid of a mid player, banning out Queen of Pain, who has also, who has always seen, actually, a lot of mid play, so... Another brilliant band there. Looking, uh, frankly, at the numbers, uh, we've seen that Team Omega have actually uh, done quite well winning both of their games. First game, they won 20-2 to against the Novatores, uh, which was just a complete wipe. And their second game, they won 36-35 to against NTV. I wasn't uh, privileged to be able to watch that match, so I'm not quite sure how that match went down. But Omega are sort of looking like the favourites here. Broats have lost their game 9-28 to to BIC. So I'm sort of rooting for the underdogs here, for the, for Team Broats, which already do have a couple of very strong picks on the board. So let's see how they draft this out, uh, and let's see what they run as their lanes, and how they can really turn this game around uh, with Team Omega. Fourth Dying band team coming team in, in here is a Silencer. So there's no real... Uh, I can't team. see any big pattern here, but an immediate fourth Not band a of a Visage there by Broach. They just don't want to see those familiars coming out, not in a fit. And then an immediate pick by Naga Siren. So, is this a respect ban with a silencer after the Naga Siren comes out? Maybe it's those big team ults, the coil. Uh, Bat Rider's just good. <laughs> the big ult by uh, Obsidian Destroyer, sorry, Outworld Devourer, Outworld Destroyer. Um, maybe they're trying to ban out these big ult players. I'd be Ten saying maybe a Tide, maybe a... Maybe a uh, uh, Magnus. You can see a lot Five of big play remain. here. And Team Broach just picking out strong heroes. There's a strong carry there, Alchemist. A couple of strong supports and a strong mid. And they just don't want to see Team Omega take a particularly strong team. So we're just waiting here for the third ban here by Team Omega. I imagine they will be still picking up their supports, they don't want to reveal their mid that quickly. Of course, they could definitely play Bane mid, uh, pick a couple of supports, pick an off lane, and then surprise, surprise, you've got a Bane mid. And Bane isn't a terribly bad, ter terribly bad mid. He's got um, a good disable if he needs to get out. He's got a strong nuke, which also gives him life, makes him quite tanky. Um, but his ability as a teamfight player is also very, very strong in the fact that he can completely shut down uh, the enemy carry, or maybe another support, just bring him out of the fight. Naga Siren hasn't popped her ult, you can just completely shut her down, and if you've got a BKB, then nobody can really stop you. 
There's an offlane Lone Druid. Once again, could be a mid, so very, very versatile picks by Team Omega here. Uh, we've got an off, a possible offlane Weaver. We've definitely seen that played before, and we've got a possible offlane Lone Druid. We've got a possible mid Lone Druid. M Lone Druid has seen some play in mid. We've got a mid Bane, which could also be a support. Very versatile picks here from Team Omega. Magnus responds with another big team fight hero. Uh, not Magnus. <laughs> team Broats responds with another big team fight hero. Here, suddenly you've got the Dark Seer, uh, vacuuming Life Stealer and. Fest Bomb, Naga Siren popping the ult and Magnus just bringing them all in together after that vacuum and, and just dealing a lot of damage there and we can definitely see a lot of potential here. Uh, they've also got very good disables. Uh, uh, sorry, they don't have very many disables. Uh, the Naga Siren has her net, but that's really just about it for in, the, in terms of disables for Team Broats here, whereas Bane, of course, the disable hero and Lone Druid with that chance of proccing the, uh, the Ensnare sort of have the upper hand on the disables rather than the team fight. And now they pick up Rubik. And Rubik isn't himself a disable, but he can definitely uh, pick up and set up for a disable, pick up for a, for a grip from Bane, for example. But mainly, that Rubik is just a big counter to Life Stealer, to Naga, to Magnus, even to Darkseer, stealing a wall. Maybe not as good, definitely debatable. Stealing a vacuum, once again, debatable. But stealing an RP or stealing a song definitely makes a huge difference to a team fight. So a very strong pick here by Team Omega, now picking out the Rubik. Probably a support Rubik. Uh, supporting that Weaver, who I presume is the hard carry, but he hasn't particularly been countered yet. Um, best way to counter Weaver is just to absolutely nuke him down, and they, they don't have particularly strong nuke heroes. Naga Siren with her, uh, with her wave, what, what is it? Uh, rip Riptide, that's what it is. With her Riptide, definitely does a lot of damage. Darkseer, once again, not so much. You've got the Iron Shell. Life Stealer can right-click, but you can escape from a right-click. Magnus Shockwave, mm, mm, they sort of do need a solid stun on that Weaver, which they don't quite have yet if they are to play, if Team Omega are going to play him as the hard carry. It's taking a long time on this uh, final ban here. They're probably wondering what they're going to need to ban out. They've got two supports, they've got an offlane, they've got a carry. They probably want to ban out a strong mid. And good mids that I can see here are Queen of Pain, of uh, OD, uh. Puck. They've already been banned out. Storm Spirit is the next ban. Radiant I really Queen couldn't see what a good strong mid hero for this sort of team lineup would be. Possibly a Dragon Knight even. Having said that, though, Dragon Knight's a reasonably easy mid to counter, and Team Broats haven't really picked their mid yet. Of course, we could see a Pudge mid. Could see a Pudge hooking out of those si Naga Siren songs, maybe. Hooking Naga out of the song, <laughs> who, who knows? Pulling the song away from the team fight. Magnus is a possible... Actually, Magnus definitely is a possible mid or possible offlane as well. Oh, Darkseer is in the offlane, yes, of course. So Magnus is going to be the mid hero pick here with a Warlock pick uh, and probably Warlock Naga supporting a Life Stealer in a tri lane here. Of course, we could see dual lanes, good old-fashioned dual lanes. We haven't seen much of that. And Invoker is the response mid from Team Omega, and what a pick. What a pick for a, for a mid from Invoker here. Uh, definitely, I could see a lot of things happening with team fights here. The Rubik popping his ultimate to steal somebody else's ultimate. Lone Druid with the chases, Bane with the grips. But similarly, you've got the other team. You've got Song into Vacuum, into RP, into into uh, uh, Warlock. Whoa, what's Warlock's ult? Uh, chaotic Offering into Chaotic Offering into a Life Stealer bomb, and then just right click away. They're already going to be almost dead. Let's see how Team Omega try to counter this obvious team fight strategy. Maybe they just go for pickoffs. Maybe they just go for grips. Maybe they get Weaver just running around, not solo farming all the time. Maybe they roam support. I'd love to see how both of the teams really play this out. So let's get started checking out the teams here. GLHF to all teams. GG's. Um, Prepare for battle. We've got Bane here on Bloodstruck uh, as part of uh, Team uh, Omega. We've got Invoker here. It's the carry, apparently. Yeah, we've got the carry Invoker. <laughs> Love this. Ada L is on the Rubik. Uh, there's been a bit of a pause, so we'll continue going. Big Cow is going to be that uh, offlane lone druid. And epic on that probably carry weaver. It could be an offlane weaver and a mid carry <laughs> carry invoker. 
I'd love to. I'd honestly love to see that. I'd love to see a carry invoker supported by Rubik uh, and Bane and Weaver in the off lane with a mid lone draw. That would be absolutely amazing. I absolutely love to see that. Let's take a look at the other side. Lag and Team Broach is taking up the Life Stealer. Meanwhile, the big team fight heroes taken up by CJ Izzle on the Magnus. Got Slick Fingers on the Warlock here and Nocturne playing the Naga Siren. And the Dark Seer is taken up by Conga. And they're just running through the jungle. It looks like there might be a bit of a confrontation. They've already smoked up. So they're looking for a team fight against the team fight team before the team fight team can have team fight. How many times have I said team fights in this battle yet? <laughs> but it looks like they're, they're going in already. They're smoked up. Looks like they definitely want to get a kill. And there's definitely no vision. So they're going to blow smoke, I imagine, before they come around the tree line. And they've already blown smoke there. And oh, and that's an initiation on that lifesteal. He immediately rages. Immediately pops out rage. Meanwhile, Magnus shoots out a shockwave. But it looks like nothing's going to happen here. And there's a sleep here on the... Uh, there's a sleep here on the Warlock. But nothing's going to happen. There's going to be a couple of right clicks. But, uh... Except for a few harass, nothing has come out of that uh, particular initiation there. And the teams go back to their particular lanes. Warlock with an interesting build here. He's got a ring of protection. He's got a couple of uh, couple of clarity potions. He's obviously piped some uh, regen off to nobody? Off to the mid? Off to... Yeah, maybe the mid? Uh, yeah, he's got a 190, so he... Gave off some regen. No, that's not right. I'm looking at the wrong team. Oh, yeah, Courier as well. Yeah, okay. Courier maybe and wards. But I haven't placed wards, but oh well. Let's see how this goes. So it looks like it's a uh, defensive tri-lane here versus an offensive tri-lane. Oh, Weaver offensive tri-lane. Team, uh, team Omega really pulling out the big guns here. Really trying to. Now, I have played Team Omega before, and they are very good with their team management. Uh, they just happen to know how to talk to each other. They can be in several places at the same time. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, we've got a solo Darkseer versus a solo lone Druid, and I really don't know who wins um, on this battle. I presume the Darkseer gets more farm, and maybe the lone Druid gets harassed. That bear will get harassed a lot, but I can't see lone Druid himself getting harassed. And now he's placed the Ion Shell on top of... Oh, first blood here! Killing Slick Fingers. Rubik obviously getting a hit on the Warlock. And there's still going on here. And down goes the Weaver. Weaver obviously playing a part in that initiation. And they're already gone on Nocturne. Bloodstruck is stuck. He's going to be in there. It takes one more hit on Nocturne and that's two for two. It's two for two going down. Naga going down. But Naga getting a kill on Bane. Who helps on a kill on Warlock who wasn't in for a kill on Weaver there. Ultimately, I think the best one out of here is Lifestealer, who's already level 3, and it's only not even 2 minutes in. Definitely getting the better end of the deal, staying alive through all of those team fights. whereas the Weaver actually has died and did need to TP back, unfortunately. So Warlock playing a very good support there. Um, I'd happily trade a Weaver for a Warlock um, any day, especially a Warlock that has no items. I mean... Um, he's specifically trying to give one for the team, denying as many as he can there, giving as many last hits to the uh, life stealer there. Meanwhile, we've got the carry, the carry, the carry deciding to go two points, two points in quas. So maybe he's just trying to put some pressure on Magnus, who should have a bottle on the way. Is that bottle on the courier? That bottle is on the courier, and he's already gotten sentry wards as well. Or well, somebody's gotten the sentry wards so that they can go to... Oh, and there's there's the frost. There's the frost. He's going to harass him out of lane, but he's not going to do much damage. And he's going to take some creep hits as well. But he's got amazing regen with those three points in Quas. And he's gone one point in Wex as well. Let's take a quick look at last hits. Oh, Nagasiren. Weaver taking down Nagasiren again. I should really be looking at this offensive tri lane a lot more. Sorry about that, guys. Two kills already to Life Stealer. This is absolutely, this is going absolutely amazingly for Team Broats. And there was a trade-off here. Life Stealer killed the Rubik. Ah, oh, brilliant, absolutely brilliant play. And now they're going on this Life Stealer, but I don't think they're going to be able to do anything to this Life Stealer here. Uh, let's take a look here at the last hits. So yeah, Lone Druid uh, hitting the last hits, unsurprisingly. Illusion. The carry now has an Illusion rune, so he might force him out of lane with good micro. 
management skills here if he can. So who knows what's happening here. Naga Siren trying to scout out the area again. Uh, the warding is on the Radiant side and on the Dire side on the bottom rune and he's gone so definitely pushing this Magnus out of the lane and he's got 14 last hits which is second last and seven denies so Carrie is doing absolutely brilliantly in the mid lane. Meanwhile the lifesteal are not as many last hits as he could have but he is beating the opposing tri lane which is an offensive tri lane much more important than a defensive tri lane um, who are just jungle pulling here. So a couple of trade-offs between the Dark Seer and the Lone Druid here. Lone Druid once again taking some damage, but he's still got plenty of regen. He's still doing absolutely fine. And the bear's been sent back to base by the looks of it, yeah. Bear's about to die. Don't resummon him, just send him back to base. Done, I guess guess that's fair. Guess that works, whatever works. And the Bane ends up taking the sentries. I'm not sure why Bane took the sentries. No invis heroes around here. Um, the invoker can invis. The Weaver can invis, so maybe he just wants to de-ward their sentries, which they don't have placed. So there you go. Of course, they could be waiting until sentry wards are placed, like when they pick out the uh, the Weaver when he's trying to skim across. No, oh, excuse me, there. He's trying to scuttle across. And it's just standard farming here, with Lone Druid definitely taking the most last hits here. And it looks like he may have something... He's just got he's just got the recipe, a hand of Midas recipe on the bear. So he don't even it doesn't even have a, have a hand. I I don't like this idea of um Oh brilliant Weaver diving way too far, getting caught by the net, but he did take out Warlock, although that is what a second death to Weaver. That is his second death. Meanwhile, lifesteal on 201. I tell you what, 201 is much better than 221. That lifestealer just farming away, gaining life whenever he can, and just continuously putting pressure on that lane. Absolutely brilliantly done. Meanwhile, they've tried to go on this Naga. No, and nothing's happening. So it's four all here. Going back to this Hand of Midas. He's got the Hand of Midas now, but buying a recipe, in my opinion, doesn't help you at all. Magnus is going to desperately look for a rune. And he's gotten unlucky. And it's a regen rune, which would have helped him so much up top. But instead, they were just pushing. Top lane. They've gone in on the Lifestealer again, and finally they've taken him down. But is this too far of a dive again? No, all three people are there. The jungle creeps are going to come out to help. But looks like nothing's happening. Both the Warlock and the Naga Siren both backing out and just trying to get farm here. Rubik ends up taking this uh, regeneration rune, which is going to do him a lot of favours. Meanwhile, who's missing? Oh, here's who's missing. Invoker has come into the lane. They've dived past the tower. Lifestealer is going to have a feast, if you know what I mean. And is he going to ghost walk? He is going to ghost walk. But meanwhile, Rubik's just going to come back behind and he's just going to make sure that Lifestealer can't get that kill. So absolutely brilliant plays. A couple of kills and a couple of supports here for the Invoker who gets away with us. The body box on that Bane, absolutely amazingly done there as well. Very smart thinking by that Bane. But as I said, he is a tanky hero and he can just brain sap and... Uh, no, is it, brain? it isn't brain sap, yeah. And just... Uh, gain back that life. Looks like uh, somebody's pinging out something here. It looks like Warlock might be pinging out saying, hey, this lone druid is getting a bit of farm. He might have uh, the most last hit. Suddenly that's uh, a really different uh, from what we saw before. That Weaver getting a couple of kills there. Looks like they've gone in the mid. They want to go in on the mid. I wonder if Magnus knows. Either way, nothing seems to be going to happen. And Magnus is feeling comfortable being that far ahead. Fair enough. Well done. A little bit harassed on this Naga Siren here, who looks to be placing a ward. Is that a sentry? That is a sentry. So that sentry has spotted that Radiant Observer ward, I presume. But uh, Naga, without a Quilling Blade, definitely can't take him down. So, Lone Druid has left the lane. I wonder what he's doing. He's spotted the Darkseer here. There might be a bit of a tussle. No, Darkseer doesn't want any of it. He's just going to back off. And then he's just going to go straight into the jungle. Perfect, perfectly jungling Lone Druid. This means a lot more free farm for the uh, for the Darkseer. Who 
is quite low down on the last hit scale. Lone Druid completely wrecking him, but Lone Druid is just, just going to come back into lane and just make sure that he still can't get his last hits. So, very, very good play by the Lone Druid there, and him sprinting out of there. So it is, it's surging out of there, wondering that there might be an attack coming in from one of the uh, mid or top lanes. So currently the offensive tri lane has paid off, but only with the aid of Invoker, uh, who was also going there to help them get a couple of kills, help Weaver get a couple of kills, definitely did pay off, but a roaming Invoker is a good Invoker, a roaming mid is a good mid, unless you've got a mid that uh, really needs that team fight potential, like a Chaos Knight who needs his double ult. There's been a sleep here on the... Oh, and she's going to be picked up and she's going to be completely wrecked, and that is a two... Hero. That is a 2 3 hero death. And in the bottom lane, was that a solo against the Darkseer? Oh, that's absolutely terrifying. So, three of the supports, three of big team fights to heroes, and now they're just going to try and just push this tower down. Absolutely amazing play by Team Omega here. They're probably yelling at Magnus. They're saying, Oi, Magnus, call mid. Call mid missing. Oh my god, why don't you call mid missing? Now, if he had level 6, I can guarantee you that that would be a dead life stealer. Now, they're going to TP right to the tower here. Magnus is going to TP, and I think, I'm pretty sure he's going to regret it. But he does get two, and then he just runs. And there it is. Oh, one more hit, and he's down. Yeah, that was a very regretful TP. And I tell you what, that life stealer is going to go straight down. Two kills completely given to the hands of Team Omega there, and now they're going to get a third. Warlock not able to run away from that. Another three kills going straight in the way of uh, of Team Omega. And Nocturne is just here without level six, thinking, oh no, what am I going to do? Luckily they've pulled back, but there's no way that I'm going to leave my tower now that there's a little bit of vision. She definitely can go and farm, and that's what she'll do with the next creep wave. Meanwhile, Darkseer just came straight back into the lane. That must have been an entangle kill. That must have been an entangle kill that we missed while the big team fight was up top. But what a shame for a life stealer that's uh, not a life stealer. Sorry, for a uh, for a Darkseer that's doing already reasonably bad. Meanwhile, uh, Team Omega wants to be pushing mid. This tower's taken a little bit of damage, but not much. They're initiating on the Magnus there who will just walk away and he'll be absolutely fine. Magnus getting a couple of uh, creep last hits there, the creeps that followed him. Pops a couple of bottle charges and he's fine. And he's gotten two points in Empower here rather than points on Skewer. Which, excuse me if I say that uh, isn't good, but it really does increase that distance on that Skewer. And what's going to happen? He's not going to have time to Skewer out. He is going to pull Weaver back, but that's not going to help him. Weaver's going to get a uh, kill on him, and I'm afraid to say that this is a terribly one-sided game that looks to have gone completely in the way of Team Omega. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, and Weaver's going to not even take a hit, he's going to lose the tower range before that tower shot hits him. 14-4 for Team Omega. Uh, let's take a look at the player's net worths, and we can take a look at the gold graphs, and there's a TP in there from the Life Stealer, who's going to get gripped. Now it doesn't deal damage, the right click deals damage. And it doesn't matter whether you have rage or not, that's a, a dead lifestealer, definitely. Not to mention Naga Siren also going in as well. That's going to be <laughs> him diving past the tier 2. And he's going to get a couple more right sits on that Dark Sea, who's very tanky, but that's that's kill. That's three more kills, 17 to 4. Unfortunately, terrible play here by Team Broach, who are doing so well in the laning phase against an offensive tri lane. Uh, so just unlucky to see here. Not to mention this big guy here. He's just farming. He's got 2.6k gold. He wants to get, what, a Radiance? He's going to get a Radiance on that bear anytime soon. The bear already has the Orb of Venom. And he's passed the gloves off to the bear. Um, just uh, amazing play. Uh, nobody's really gone for him. Team Broats don't really know what to do. They're going to have to group up. They're going to have to get a strong team fight and really come back because the net worth 5.4 thousand on the on Lone Druid, uh, almost 5,000 on Weaver, and just behind him is the Invoker. So absolutely amazing to play. So now they're going to two-man this mid. Now, I'm sorry guys, but you just can't afford to be two-manning because even I reckon even if Bane, I mean 
you know, just Bane and Invoker come out. You look like there's a bit of a confrontation here bottom, but they're going to pull out, and there's a TP in, and, oh, Magnus wanted to go in, but he didn't go in, and there's a sleep on the darks here there. Are they going to follow it up? They're going to want to follow it up. They're going to want to follow it up, and they're going to get it. It's going to hit. It's going to hit, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough damage. Can he beat off that swarm creep? Yeah, it looks like he's gaining life. He's going to be absolutely fine. Hit on there. Warlock gets thrown back in. He's still got Life Stealer ahead of him, and there he goes. There's the Infest Bomb, but it's just not enough. Their right click damage is absolutely huge. Bloodstruck is going to kill Secure that. Darkseer trying to come back into the fight. Can he make it to base quick enough before the urn goes off? And one more hit, and there he goes down as well. That's Nocturne getting really, really low there, but not taking the kill. But still, that's three more. Jeez, that's four more, actually. That's 21. Four. And that tower's going to go down, and the next tower's going to go down, and I'd frankly, I'd be calling it GG. I can understand that why the teams don't want to. I mean, uh, it is a best of one, and you basically have to try and do the best you can, but uh, I'm sincerely saying that it's GG to Team Omega, who's 12,000 uh, experience ahead, uh, 11,000 gold ahead. I I'm sorry, but I can't see how Broats can bring this back. Team uh, Omega's already grouping up mid again. They didn't go for Roshan. They've just grouped up mid. This <laughs> this Magnus has come way too far forward. They really need to five, man. They can't have two in one lane and two in another. They just can't afford to do that when Team Omega is five manning. And they're just going to push down this tower. And the Bear's tower pushing ability. Look at that hit. Just each hit, it just takes the tower down bit by bit. Absolutely amazing. And he can resummon that Bear if he needs to. It's a big hit there by the Invoker who has been trapped in, but nothing's happened out of there, and that's a brilliant return, no, Naga Sleep goes off, can they initiate on something with this, no they can't, Darkseer's gone down, they just back off, they don't want to try anything else, they're going to let the tower go down, and that's a bit of a shame, not even a glyph popped there, maybe they're just waiting for their tier 3 glyph, to, uh, glyphs, tier 3 towers to pop the glyphs, and that's a completely new summon bear, they're just looking to just keep pushing, they're going to keep putting pressure which is uh, against a team fight sort of lineup. That's exactly what you want to be doing. You don't want to let them ever get the upper hand because if they have good entry in a team fight, they probably have good exit in a team fight. If you know what I mean, they come out with the most kills. Uh, and they're just constantly putting pressure. Looking back on the courier, what do we have on this courier? What do we have on this courier? We have a mech. A mech already. We've got a mithril hammer. Not sure who the mithril hammer is going to. Bless you, uh... Fire and zero, and again. <laughs> a couple of sneezes in the background there. Meanwhile, uh, Naga Siren has gone down, and uh, Magnus lifted and gone down there, and they're just going to keep pushing this tower, and I reckon it's been way too long for a GG call. Smoke up, and they're going to just keep pushing. They've gotten their stuff. What do they have? What do they have here? They've got a mech already. They've popped a mech. He doesn't have much. What does his bear have? His bear has a sacred relic, Hand of Midas, Orb of Venom. That's all you really need, especially 16 minutes in. That is absolutely amazing. There's been a grip on this life stealer. The grip's about to run out. That life stealer's going to infest, but he's going to be picked up before he can ensnare. Get me out of here, please, Naga. And Naga just backs off. Ah, oh, unfortunate play here. Just Team Amiga just absolutely drilling them with every little thing, just constantly putting pressure. I really can't see them coming back from this. Watch this 15,000 experience to Team Omega. Over 15,000 gold for Team Omega. It's absolutely amazing play. I really can't see this last much longer. Mind you, in TI2, we did have a game that did go 20,000 gold in favor of one team before the team said GG. So, will we see it here? Will, will we see 30,000? Will Team Broats bring it back? You just don't know. You never know. You never know what exactly could happen. Meanwhile, Team Omega are going for Roshan here. Very good play because even if uh, even if Team Broats wanted to contest that, maybe they could sing, steal the Aegis. But other than that, they couldn't really do much. They couldn't get they couldn't get uh, the last hit on Roshan. And even if they stole the Aegis. Team Omega would just absolutely wreck them. Not to mention that the song is actually down because it was used to save that life stealer before. So they take a completely uncontested Roach. Roach. Roche. Rosh. Roshan. Roshi. Roshi, mate! Um, and currently the net worth 
<laughs> is in favor of Team Omega supports higher than it is in favor higher than it is uh, for Broach's carries which isn't looking very good at all maybe they can defend this if they can get a good team fight off I mean some of these streaks are going to are going to award a lot of gold maybe they can have something here maybe they can start off with a song the song is up the song is up pop the song are we going to see it are we going to see it happening are they going to let the tower fall they're going to it's glyphed they're going to be they're going to glyph it now no, they're going to go in. Look at that damage! Just from that couple of hits, there's just so much damage there. The tower goes down. They're too scared to go in on this. Especially when one little hit, they have to cap. They have to get completely the entire team within a sing. Preferably the entire team within an RP. They're going to have to really put a lot of effort here. That lifesteal is just waiting for that Magnus to go in. But they probably want to sing first. Are they going to? Two racks down. They're going to back off. They're going to back off. Can they at least make a pick off? Is there a sing? Is there a net? No, there's nothing. They're just going to push this lane, and they're going to come back in. That Nightmare actually saving him, but it's not going to be enough. He's going to go straight down. Naga Siren's down. Um, and that looks to be it. Weaver going back to tower, pushing this lane, getting a lot more farm. Good on him, and they're just going to back off. They've taken, they've taken the racks. They don't need to do anything else. Uh, that's one lane of racks and all tier 3 towers remaining. So now he's going on this invoker, which is feeling really good about himself. Is he going to be able to get out? He doesn't have anything for 6 seconds, but he tries to get away. He's getting very close. One more hit. Can he pop? Can he pop the ghost walk? No, he... No, the team comes back in. And there's a sing. There's a sing. We could get something here. Could we get something here? Nope. No, we couldn't get anything. They're just going to back off. That's another waste of a song, unfortunately. That carry invoker <laughs> doing big work there. Harassing and then getting out of the way while Magnus dies. Just absolutely amazing play. So I can unfortunately but wholeheartedly say that this team has definitely gone to Omega. But let's see how it pans out and let's see uh, how much time it takes before Team Broach really. We've gone above 20,000 now. We've gone above 20,000. It's almost 25,000 difference in gold earned to Team Omega. And you look at how close it was at the beginning. You see it was sort of ish, sort of up, sort of down for the first few minutes. And then it just skyrocketed after a couple of ganks. And he skewers in! 2 nothing. And he's well behind the lines, and he's already gotten a couple of hits here. Stolen the mana. He's going to kill that Warlock. Three. Bang. Perfect hit on that Warlock there. Lifesteal is already down. Magnus has gone down as well by the rest of the team. Nocturne is trying to run. And apparently Roadkill wins, but let's leave that for next time. And that's almost a team wipe, except for the only one that can get out of there with a Surge, which is the Darkseer. Are we going to see a GG call? There's a GG call. Nocturne calls it. The rest of uh, Team Omega say, well played, GG's, good games, that was an absolutely gone good game uh, in favour of Team Omega. So I missed a couple of kills there, sorry about that guys. Um, I'm not actually used to casting, uh, to solo casting, I usually cast with somebody else, which is always a lot nicer than solo casting because they pick up some things that you don't notice. Let's have a quick look at the uh, final stats of this game. Weaver with a gold per minute of 522, just amazing. Seeing as Lifestealer was the only one with a higher gold per minute than 217, it, it was an absolute shame in complete steamroll, complete steamroll towards... Um, Team Omega, with that Weaver bringing it back, he's got a Deso, he's got a BKB, uh, absolutely play. Mech, I think that was a 15 minute mech, which is very good, absolutely amazing. Drums, Urn, uh, Invoker, even having the Aggers there right at the end, uh, and Rubik with a Blink, I guess that's all you need. If you're playing Rubik, you get you buy the wards, you get a Blink, you make something of the team. Well played to absolutely everybody uh, in the team. Thank you definitely to both teams for having me as a caster. I hope you both enjoyed this cast. Uh, and I will be casting a few more games. Just hit the uh, follow button either on YouTube or on Twitch. My YouTube is youtube.com slash goingonlylogical, which will be up. Uh, all of these games will be up on YouTube as well if you'd like to rewatch anything or if you're uh, not here at the time of the game. But definitely follow, definitely subscribe. And I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for having me.